My P has a strong personality. It's really aggressive, loud, and when she comes, boy, oh boy, you just can't stop her. I'm a teacher, so thank goodness I don't have to pee too often because I can't until summer anyway. My pee is like a meddling mother-in-law, always popping in unannounced. <laughs> like when I laugh and when I <laughs> sneeze. If your pee had a personality, what would yours be? And is it normal? We'll be giving you the quiz to determine what's your pee type and what it means for your health from UTIs to dehydration to leaky bladders. Plus, the 20-second bladder rule that urologists want you to follow. Join me to explain is urologist and sexual health expert, Dr. Jennifer Berman. Let's start by talking about how the bladder and the brain talk to each other. So I built you a bladder here, right? Thank and this, you. I say, this is the toilet bowl. So I'll be... You'll with be... A, with the water. The urinary drink. stream. Okay. Okay, so it's really a very sophisticated reflex that occurs between the brain and bladder. The bladder has stretch receptors in it that as it fills, it starts to send signals up into the brain. We'll say the brain's up here. I'm filling, I'm filling, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. And it gets to the point when it's full. Like, now, now it's, now it's still saying stop, right? It's the, holding. Right, the brain is saying stop, don't move, hold on. You may even feel something, but maybe subconsciously you're just sure, saying but stop. I, I, I'm not full enough yet, but it gets to a point at capacity when the brain says, time to go. And when it says time to go, the bladder contracts and the, the bladder neck and urethra relax. And that allows us to evacuate urine. I feel like I have to go right now because I hear the water. <laughs> I know, I'm hearing that too. <laughs> But we take this for granted, but it is an important reflex. Our bladder is an important organ, and we need to be aware about the signals that it's sending us to maintain bladder health. And sometimes it's uh, urinary tract infection can throw it a wire, but it could be environmental issues, it could be other toxins, and it just could be something you have to train. And we can develop bad habits that cause problems. Going too often, holding, not going. We heard about the teacher holding, hold. I'm a doctor, I hold, hold, hold. And that can lead to problems. Yeah, peeing during surgery is hard. <laughs> right. So let's get to this quiz you've got to help everyone determine their pee type. Keep track of how many A's, B's, and C's you have. Straightforward. First question, what color is your pee? Here are some examples. Are you A, pale yellow? Are you B, nearly colorless? Or are you C, dark yellow? How can the color of our pee be important? Well, the color of, the, of your urine is important because it gives us an indicator of hydration status, health. Sometimes uh, dark urine is a sign of dehydration. Sometimes there could be blood in the urine, which changes. So it's important to pay attention to the color. Clear, we all think that you should drink to clear. Clear is better. Clear is not necessarily better. You can overhydrate, and that can overstretch the bladder, lead to other voiding symptoms and problems. C pale yellow is really the normal normal color of urine, and that's where we like to be. You can sort of read through it, but not perfectly. You, that you can kind of read, see? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think, I mean, you, I, yeah. I mean, you had to. You <laughs> wouldn't purposely do it. All right, next question. How often do you pee? I can make it through a concert, an opening act. It's about three or four hours. B, I need to go at least twice throughout a movie showing. Yes, I'm the one making everyone stand as I squeeze through the aisle. And C, I can wait in the DMV line twice. That's five hours or more for a lot of people, right? So could holding it in too long cause problems? Holding urine can cause problems because what happens is the bladder stretches, and we talked about that reflex. You can destroy or inhibit the reflex back to the brain. When the bladder is, is stretched, it doesn't have enough tension to contract, so you retain urine, you don't empty all the way, that can lead to infections, stones, and incomplete emptying, ultimately incontinence. So it's, we have to pay attention to those signals. Holding is bad, going too often is also bad, oh. and we're creating these habits that are dysfunctional and um, miscommunicating messages to the brain. So I didn't realize that by going a lot, you might actually create a habit to go too much, more than you need to. It creates what we call sensory urgency, where your signals are saying, I got to go, I got to go to go, and your bladder is not full. There's nothing in there. Right. Oh, my goodness. We got to do this right. This, I thought this was a pretty <laughs> simple process. All right, let's get to the results, see where everybody is. So if you answered mostly A's, right, that means you're a confident bladder person, and that means that you're doing your business smart. You pee the right amount of time, you keep yourself hydrated, high five, way to go. <laughs> After you're done washing your hands, high five. If you answered mostly B's, you're a frequent peer. What does that mean? Frequent peer is going to the bathroom more than the three to four, four to six times per day, 
sensory urgency. Her brain, we, we saw one of your, your, your viewers had this. Her brain's saying, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. And it is mixed messages. But there are other reasons why people might frequently pee. Urinary tract infections is one of the big ones. Stones in the bladder is another, way, uh, another one. Even, you know, cancer, polyps, tumor stones, all of these things that we go through as urologists in our brain to rule out medical reasons why. Behavior or medical? Oh my goodness, so don't be a frequent peer. And the C's are procrastinate peers. You gotta love these names. So what's a procrastinate peer, <laughs> what do they do? They're holders, the teachers, the doctors, the, you know, the people that work um, you know, in, in jobs. And that, you know, the procrastinate peers don't have the sensation. They've trained themselves to have the opposite of sensory urgency. So they're holders. And the problem with that, as we said over time, is that it, it, it it inhibits the bladder reflex and the bladder doesn't contract properly. And we're holding onto urine, which puts pressure back in the kidneys. We're holding onto urine after we pee, which leads to infections. There are also medical reasons why people might be procrastinate peers. One of the most common is diabetes, which affects nerves, especially the nerves to the bladder. So they, they could get balloon bladders, bladders that fill so much that until they feel it. And in extreme cases of procrastinate peers, sometimes we have to catheterize them in order to empty. So you don't want to hold. Trust me, you don't want to end up having to catheterize yourself. I thought this was sort of a light topic. This is a lot of good <laughs> stuff here. Seriously. I'm getting rid of the Google. Is talking important, to you. Like the heart, you know, it's an organ we have to protect. So let's talk about time. We've been debating it a little bit. Is there a correct amount of time that people should be peeing? Well, in, practically speaking, and according to research, 20 seconds is the golden rule. Whether you're an, a rat or an elephant, this apparently represents the amount that an elephant urinates in one setting, and that's you know a smaller animal. Whether we're big or small, we need to allow time to completely empty. Take our time, don't rush, don't push, 20 seconds roughly. So, so whether you're a cat or an elephant, it's still 20 seconds, in, including humans? Including humans. Oh my goodness. So I actually looked this up, it turns out men and women have pretty much the same size bladder. So there's no such thing as a small bladder, right? There's either got a weak bladder or a strong bladder. Pick one. Make one. Ever pee when you sneeze or cough? Well, we got the paper towel test when I come back. I want everyone to take this test. It could help end those peeing problems today. We just gave you the quiz to find out your pee type, but now let's turn to finding out why you may be peeing when you sneeze, cough, or exercise. Dr. Berman is back and she recommends doing the paper towel test. I brought you a lot of paper towels. Pick your favorite one. Go ahead. Thank you. I'll take it. That's a very good one. Very good one. Okay, so what I recommend to my patients that are concerned about leakage or stress urinary incontinence is we use a white paper towel, place it on the floor, stand with your legs slightly apart, make sure you're dry prior to, prior to doing this test, and then bear down. Cough, strain, <coughs> and we want to see if there's any leakage. So this is a very easy way of identifying that. And then there's a, there's a second part to the test. What you've seen, if you have any leak, if you have no leakage, fantastic. If, it's, if you do have leakage, what do you do then? If you do have leakage, we got to talk. And, but sometimes if you engage the pelvic floor muscles and we're able to teach women how to engage their pelvic floor muscles and do proper Kegels, that can help maintain control. Right, coming over. Shatira is doing this right now. Remember, everyone needs a piece of paper and a pen. Shatira, you have your paper and your pen? Yeah, there you are. Now, you made your bladder full, I understand, with a tall glass of water. What do you hope to learn from this test? Hi, Dr. Oz. So, as we age, there's so many things that we tend to worry about, and this is one of them. But I'm definitely curious to see if my pelvic walls are still strong. I'm pretty sure they're still all, but curious to know in putting them to the test. All right, so you got your trifold paper, right? Just a single napkin like this that's folded in three. You have that? There you are. Good. Like most you know, public toilets have these, for example. So we're going to give you some privacy. You can go ahead and we'll just talk through the door. Go ahead and do the test. <laughs> okay. Now, now I, I recommend that you got put a towel under you. Do this in the, you know, in, the, in the bathroom so it's not a big problem. And I created potential, potential outcomes. This is not urine. It's actually water, Dr. Berman. Don't panic. Although you're not scared of urine. <laughs> no. So uh, I've, I had marked off as best I could. So this is uh, b baseline, and then this is after a Kegel, and the same thing for this person. So explain what this means, and I'm going to go back to Shatira and see what, how she turned out. Okay, so in this circumstance, 
she's leaked urine with straining or, or bearing down. And in this case, we're assuming that she's engaged her pelvic floor muscles, contracted her Kegels, and inhibited, let's say, 94 percent right. of the leakage. Well measured. Now, how about for this person over here? And this, before and after, it looks the same. In this person, she does not have any Kegel strength or pelvic foot, which is not uncommon. There, there's still shame and embarrassment talking about these issues, so I'm so glad that you're talking about it, and there are solutions. So if this is what's going on, then you're not going to get away with just doing Kegel exercises. So they're, they're, you have Correct. procedures now that work pretty well. There are procedures, and what's really cool about today is that there are, before all we could do was surgery, sling, lift, whatever. Today there are minimally invasive treatments that use magnetic energy. So with these new mag the electromagnetic energy, there's a device called Amcella. There are these new vaginal rejuvenation therapies that function to improve pelvic floor strength and tone that can stave off having to have surgery. All right, Shatira, the moment of truth. I heard you coughing behind the toilet. How does your paper compare before and after? Luckily, there is nothing on it. <sighs> I'm so happy for you. Well done. You can come out if you want. You made it through. <laughs> the first time we've had a guest in the bathroom, uh, Dr. Rosh. <laughs> there she is, letting herself out. I see the smile on your face. Good for you. All right. Thanks for helping with us. Dr. Berman, as always, thanks for being here. Thank Appreciate you. it. If you want to learn more about your urinary health, you can follow her at Jen Berman, MD.